Hello again and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. I am Zarkoon. Today I've got a video for you in the Turpits. And this video is about an accuracy build on the Turpits, because the Turpits has quite effective guns and they can be quite accurate and deadly. But before we get into the actual battle, I'm going to show you my commander build here for Henry J. Hyde. And you see right off the bat, first tier of skills, flammable cannoneer increases the range of the battleship's main guns by 6%, as well as increases the precision of the battleship's main guns by 3%. Does increase the risk of catching fire, which is a negative, but it's alright. We've got this other skill here called Ali Dodd, I think, in the second tier, which looks like it increases by 4 degrees the minimal ricochet angle of the battleship's shells, and decreases by 2 degrees the guaranteed ricochet angle of your battleship's shells, which I think, if I'm interpreting this correctly, means when the shell from the battleship hits an enemy battleship in the armor, it is more likely to penetrate than ricochet at certain steep angles. I think that is what this does, I'm not sure, just kind of experimenting with it. And then we've got marksmanship here, decreases the dispersion of the main battery by 5% while also increasing the rudder shift time by 5% and finally master mechanic to give us the extra repair party charge which is good for this ship this is basically why I'm using hide makes the ship a little bit more tanky in the inspirations here I should point out that I have a level 16 Andrew Cunningham to increase the battleship's main gun precision by 4.5% this is definitely a pretty big effect on my build, and you may not be able to achieve the same results that I am achieving here if you don't have a high level Cunningham, so keep that in mind. Also got a level 11 Robert or Robert Jajard to increase the AP shell penetration multiplier by 3.6%. And now, take a look at the ship itself here got uh, aiming systems mod 1 installed in the first slot which decreases the dispersion of the main battery even further by 7% and in the second slot I've got the propulsion mod could consider changing this to the steering gears mod because the Turpitz does have a 16.8 second rudder shift time on this build right now which is a little bit slow but it's not unmanageable and in this slot the Target Acquisition Systems Mod 1, I don't have that installed, it's always the last mod I install on my battleships because it's expensive and I never have a lot of silver because I still have ships and upgrades and all kinds of stuff to buy. And the thing that this does is increase the range of guaranteed acquisition of ships. So pretty much every ship in the game has a 2 kilometer guaranteed acquisition range. So if you're approaching a smoke screen and a destroyer is in it when you're in a battleship, when you are two kilometers away from them, you will automatically detect them. But if you have this mod installed, then when you are three kilometers away from them, you will automatically detect them. So it is useful if you are in a sticky situation with a destroyer, but pretty much only if you're in a sticky situation. With the destroyer, it also increases the spotting range and the torpedo visibility range, which is nice. It's a good mod, it's just really expensive, and I tend to never install it until I have an extra amount of silver lying around and want to use it. I probably should install it on the turpits because I like the turpits quite a bit, and I use it a fair amount, so. But I'll, I'll get around to it eventually. Fourth mod slot, we've got main battery mod 3 to decrease the main battery reload time by 12% and increase or decrease rather the main battery traverse speed by 13%, which is not nice, but it's also not that big of a problem if you're managing your guns correctly. All right, well with that out of the way, we'll jump into the battle now. Okay, so we've got a battle on Trident capture the base mode. We are in the premium tier 7 turpits. We've got Hyde as our commander, and we are going to be testing out the accuracy of the turpits guns 
and I think you'll find that the turpits can be quite accurate and quite effective. I think actually an accuracy build on the turpits is the way to go. I know the ship with its torpedoes, turtleback armor scheme, and German origins, etc. Make a lot of people think it is a good brawler ship, and it is, but the thing about brawling is when you are engaging an enemy in a brawling type manner, you really only want to engage one enemy at a time. You don't want to be in a situation where you are coming in close to an enemy battleship and you've got an enemy cruiser and an enemy destroyer and another enemy battleship shooting at you. If you do that, you are going to die. <laughs> so, it is a very good idea, in my opinion, to buff the accuracy of the Tirpitz main guns as much as possible. So you see right off the bat we've got an enemy Tirpitz out there that we are engaging. Take a couple shots at him with the forward guns and only get one shatter, but that's okay because we've got a Charlemagne who is shooting AP at us, bouncing a couple shells, getting a couple little scrapes on us with his nice little French AP, but he is making a big error in Turning completely broadside, so all guns on him, shots out, and let's see what these do. Yeah, they delete him <laughs> for three citadels in one hit. All 30,000 HP gone, devastating strike, first blood medal. <laughs> so, as the game says, off to a great start. And now we've got the enemy Tirpitz who has decided, oh no, I'm not having any of this. I'm going to turn broadside and get out of here. He is behind the island. We launch shells at him anyway. Get a decent little armor penetrating hit on him. But it's not, you know, anything catastrophic in the way the hit against the Charlemagne was. Now, there's a lot of enemy battleships out there. So we're going to turn to port here. Use this island as cover so that we are not taking shots from all of the enemies that there are. And we're going to try to flank these guys, create a crossfire situation as our team moves forward a little bit. So, Tirpitz accuracy build. I think Hyde is a great build for this, if you have him, especially because of the extra heal, which makes the Tirpitz quite a bit tankier in the last update to the Tirpitz where it was buffed. The Tirpitz' heal was also buffed. The duration on the heal is a bit longer. You can recover a little bit more HP with it. It's a pretty powerful heal now. So if you have four of them, that is quite a bit better than three. And also, Hyde's base trait increases the HP count of the ship by a certain percentage anyway, so we're up to max HP of 71,590 HP, which puts the turbots at quite a high HP count, probably one of the highest in or at the tier. So that's nice, although I don't know that I would use any commander like Sims, for example, who increases the HP count of a ship as an inspiration on any battleship. I think those inspirations are more effective on destroyers, but since it's Hyde's base skill, it is nice to have. And you'll see we have three citadels already, all three from the shot on the Charlemagne. And take a look at the dispersion here as those shots go out against the Atago. They hit him for two citadels and reduce him to almost no health, already up to 71,564 damage. So, all those people who say that these German battleships can't hit anything, they can. You simply need to use an accuracy build. And look, another citadel against the enemy turbots who is giving an awful lot of broadside. I think he's firing HE at us. I don't know why, maybe he is not confident that he can penetrate the armor. He might be able to at this angle, I don't know, it might not be steep enough, but I think we're angled pretty well, so we don't have a lot to worry about if he were firing AP. Another shot out at him, and this one is not nearly as spectacular, but it does get us up to 100,000 damage done, and takes a nice little chunk 
off of his HP. Gonna put the fire out and engage the heal now, because we are about to disengage from this turpit. Sorry if you can hear any background noise. I live in an apartment and my insufferable upstairs neighbor is constantly bellowing at the top of his lungs, either at his girlfriend or at Fortnite, I believe, when he makes terrible, atrocious plays in that game because he sucks. So anyway, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm a little salty about my upstairs neighbors. I kind of hate them. Anyway, coming around this island here, all the enemy ships are clustered in one place. All of our ships are kind of clustered in one place too. Just sort of taking shots. We are alone on this flank, which might not be the best play. There is a destroyer in play, but I don't think he's really a threat to us. And we're coming back up on the enemy turpits, about to have shots on him again. Guns are reloaded. He's not even looking in this direction. Good for us. Take the shot, and the dispersion isn't favorable this time per se, but it takes a nice little chunk off of him. And really, the reason that I'm showing you this video and talking about the accuracy build is because, like I alluded to earlier, the Turpitz is an effective brawler. It does have torpedoes. They do hit hard. They will kill enemy ships, but only after you've damaged them a little bit with your main guns. And in order to do that, you want the main guns to be as accurate as you can get them. So hide is a good choice for a commander on an accuracy build, because he does give you the accuracy perks, also gives you the extra heal, and you can, you know, use that. Also, Hipper is a fine choice on this, although some of Hipper's skills, in addition to the one that increases the fire chance and increases the rudder shift time, I believe there's another skill that decreases the battleship's speed. I don't really want to decrease the speed on the Turpits, it's a pretty fast ship, and it's... The speed's nice for getting in and out of position. Now we've got a vanguard over here who is presenting a little bit of a broadside, firing some HE at us, lighting us on fire. That's not good. We do have that 10% fire chance penalty, which makes it a lot easier for the ship to catch on fire, and I think the German battleships in general are a lot more susceptible to catching on fire. It seems like their superstructure just is made out of gasoline and paper bags or something. It always seems to catch on fire. Another salvo from the vanguard. My salvo wasn't aimed particularly well. Three shots do bounce off the vanguard. He is slightly angled, so you see it is possible to angle the vanguard <laughs> against battleship AP. I don't know why more people don't do it. They like to give flat broadside to get all their guns on target, but you know, whatever. Coming up uh, around this island, we're gonna put it in between us and the vanguard. That shot on him does result in incapacitation. I'm not sure what module we took out, but we did something. Turpit's over there, very low health. I think he shot at me. His shells didn't cause catastrophic damage they could have. I was exposing way too much broadside to him. I'm a little bit concerned about this Iowa over here, but he doesn't seem to be paying attention to me. So I am going to risk turning a little bit more broadside to get all my guns on him. See if I can't citadel him because he is presenting an awful lot of broadside to me. And if there's one thing about the Iowa, it is that it can be citadeled very easily. Of course, the shells do not really hit midship like I wanted them to, and they don't citadel him, but we are up to 122,000 damage now. We've got the high caliber metal, so we aren't doing too badly. And you'll notice that all of this damage is coming from my main guns. Not a single point of damage from my secondaries, not a single point of damage from my torpedoes. There is another hit on the Iowa. So... Another reason to use an accuracy build on the Turpits. Like I said, brawling is very situational. You only want to engage an enemy ship in a brawling type manner if there are no other ships besides that ship to shoot at you. Oh, another Citadel on the Mogami. 
And that brings us up to eight citadels. And you can only get eight citadels in a battleship if your guns are fairly accurate. So I think that definitively proves that the Turbitz's guns can be made quite accurate. Anyway, what you want is accurate guns so that you can engage these ships at range and do damage on them consistently and do a lot of damage on them. That way, once you get into a position to start engaging in a brawl, if you can hit them with your torpedoes, you are going to take them out for sure. And if you can't get into a situation where you can brawl... Excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening with my voice here. If you can't get into a situation where you can brawl, at least your main guns will have done a significant amount of damage. So that is why I think an accuracy build on the Turpets is ideal. Because even though it is a brawler, you're not always going to find yourself in a situation where you can brawl effectively, but you are always going to find yourself in situations where you need to use your main guns in order to score damage on enemy ships, and that is essentially what we have done during this battle. Only now are we in a position where our secondaries are opening up on this vanguard, and hitting him, I'm not sure that they're doing much damage, and he is reversing, which is going to make it difficult or impossible to get a torpedo strike on him, and I am slowing down. I don't want to come around this island and expose my broadside to that enemy battleship, which I think may still be that Iowa, but the vanguard is about to die. This shot should finish him off. It does. So coming around this island is not as much of a risk now. There's that Iowa on very, very low health. We may be able to get some shots loaded and finish him off for a fourth kill. We're at three kills now, but nope. Teammate takes him out there in the Miyoko, so all that's left is the Sharnhorst. He's going to be the focus of my entire team's wrath. We've only lost two ships. This was a... Okay, three ships. This was a great game for my team. And I think now we'll just skip ahead to the battle results because nothing else much happens here. But here you go. You've got a video for an accuracy build on the Turpets proving that German guns can be quite accurate when buffed appropriately. And perhaps a persuasive case that you should employ an accuracy build on the Turpets in order to get effective damage. Imagine if, you know, the enemy team had been a bit more robust and I'd been able to engage in brawling with some of them with all this damage I've done with my main guns here. Imagine a torpedo strike against a half or quarter health battleship, you know, would have gotten more damage, could have gotten a little closer to 200k. But, you know, the brawling situations don't always happen. It didn't happen in this game, so it's a good thing I have nice accuracy on these guns, otherwise I would not have been as effective in dealing damage. So, there you go. Moral of the story. That's why you want to do an accuracy build on the Turpets, at least in my opinion anyway. You can disagree with me. And of course, I haven't skipped to the end result screen yet, but <laughs> the battle's about to end anyway. This Sharn Horst is not going to last much longer he's gone so battle's done if you like the video be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel got a lot of world of warships legends content coming all the time thank you for watching and i will see you next time goodbye